Hello, and welcome to our webinar, Page Turning Picture Book. I'm Sarah Hunter, editor of the Books for Youth and Graphic Novel sections at Booklist. Before we begin, I'd like to go over some technical details. Links to today's slide presentation and title list were included in the reminder email you received from Zoom one hour ago. To download them, please open that email, scroll to the bottom, and click on the links located there. You can also download this slides and title list by copying the URLs on this screen into your web browser. If you have any trouble, please contact us at webinars at booklistonline.com. The audience is in listen-only mode, but we welcome any questions you may have. On the bottom of your screen is a toolbar with a section for Q&A. If you have a question or need technical assistance, simply click Q&A and type your message into the box that appears. We will do our best to respond to all tech-related questions, and we'll pass along all other questions to today's panelists so they can follow up with you after the webinar. Booklist offers closed captioning on all webinars. To enable or disable captions on your screen, please look for and click the captions icon on the toolbar mentioned earlier. From there, you can select show or hide captions from the menu that appears. If you choose to enable subtitles, you can adjust the size of the captions at any time by selecting subtitle settings. And finally, Booklist expects all participants to maintain an atmosphere of respect and fairness Anyone who violates the standard of behavior, including engaging in any form of harassment, may at the discretion of the organizers be immediately removed. Today, we'll have the pleasure of hearing from Sylvia Chan, Associate Director of Marketing and Publicity at Penguin Random House Canada Young Readers, Stephanie Amon, Marketing and Publicity, Publicity Coordinator at Penguin Random House Canada Young Readers, Casey Griffin, Senior Marketing Manager at Sequoia Kids Media, Karema Carrillo, Marketing Coordinator at Albert Whitman and & Company, and Kaylee Flagg, Children's Library Marketing Associate at Simon & Schuster's Children's Publishing. First up, we'll hear from the Penguin Random House Canada Young Readers team. Sylvia Chan is the Associate Director of Marketing and Publicity at Penguin Random House Canada Young Readers. She's tutored kids on how to use an abacus, taught swimming lessons, and ran summer camp. She's also been a mentor for a BIPOC of publishing in Canada and is a cat person like me, Stephanie Amen is the Marketing and Publicity Coordinator at Penguin Random House Canada Young Readers. She is a horror movie and book enthusiast and bakes far too many cookies in her spare time. She's also worked as an indie bookseller and is a dog person. Thanks for being here, Sylvia and Stephanie. Hello, thank you for the introductions. Uh, Stephanie and I are so happy to present the picture books from Chandra Spring and Summer 2023 collection with you all today. Let's jump right in. Our first section is dedicated to the sounds of story time. Here we have No No Baby by Geisel Award honoree Anne Hunter. Her new book features an enthusiastic baby squirrel and some grumpy forest friends. This picture book is available now in a jacketed hardcover edition and we recommend it for ages three and up. Parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and educators with energetic little children in their lives will be able to admit this. Baby is adorable and baby is cute. But baby is a lot. Adults can adult to, uh, adults can relate to Bear bracing for baby's bubbly impact on this spread. The artwork in this book was rendered in ballpoint pen and colored pencil. The speech bubbles make this a great read aloud for story time. Anne grew up in Lake Worth, Florida, but now makes her home in the woods of Southern Vermont. No No Baby is the third book in the Baby Animal series. Each features a different baby animal and our standalone stories. We printed a trio of art cards, one for each book that would be great framed in a nursery, library, or classroom. So feel free to email us and we'll send you the set. From baby squirrels to little crocodiles, over to you, Steph. Next up, we have What Does Little Crocodile Say by Eva Montanari. This book features a little crocodile exploring the beach and campsite in this colorful, noisy book that we recommend for ages two to five. Perfect for parents or grandparents of toddlers or learning to read in the classroom, the simplicity of the text and the art make for a delightful read aloud. The art in the series is done in soft pencil, but Ava works with multiple traditional techniques, including pencils, chalks, oil paints, acrylics, and loves to create polymetric sculptures. She lives in Italy, five minutes away from the sea. What Does Little Crocodile Say at the Beach is the third book in the Little Crocodile series with a fourth book slated for spring 2024. 
We've created downloadable activity sheets for the first two books in the series, which are also available upon request. Our next category is Family Matters, and Banana is one of my staff picks of Spring 2023. I absolutely love how cheeky the banana device references another popular fruit named Tech Company. This picture book by Zoe Effett is available now in a jacketed hardcover edition, and we recommend it for ages three and up. Here you see dad and daughter visiting the banana store and purchasing one. At first, they have a great time with the banana as it does really cool stuff and so fun. But later, the daughter notices that he's spending too much time with the banana. Dad is distracted and not hanging out with her as much. Pick up a copy to find out what her hilarious solution is. This is such a quirky parable where the banana can represent any type of distraction from start smartphones, tablets, computer games, to television. And now we move from parental distractions to a more careful caregiving approach. Steph will tell you about the next book. If plants and wholesome grandparent stories are your thing, then you've come to the right place. The Care and Keeping of Grandmas, written by Jennifer Moxang and illustrated by Yong Ling Kang, is the book for you. We recommend this book for ages three to seven. My favorite way to describe this book is a how-to guide to taking care of your grandma. This book tells the story of a young girl and her grandma who has recently moved in with the family. The little girl is excited to live with her grandma and spends the book trying to make her feel at home. Jennifer is a first time author with Tundra Books, but you may recognize Young Ling from her previous work, Rodney Was a Tortoise. Both author and illustrator live in Toronto or the greater Toronto area. A personal favorite out of our art cards, we also have cards of the Care and Keeping of Grandmas available upon request. I promise this card will, be, will make a wonderful addition to any classroom or library plans. Don't let the cockroach cover fool you. The next section focuses on funny lessons. Your school is the best, follows an eager cockroach and his family who hitch a ride to school. This picture book is available now in hardcover and we recommend it for ages three and up. The story is told from the point of view of our charming cockroach protagonist. From science, math, show and tell to arts and craft, this little stowaway can't wait to try it all. Needless to say, the cockroach did not become the new teacher's pet. This is the second standalone book in the Curious Cockroach series, the first being Your Birthday Was the Best. We have activity sheets for the first book and downloadable certificates for Your School is the Best. Email us. Steph's going to share our next funny and gross book on the list. My favorite kind of picture books are a silly and goofy one. If you're like me, then you're going to love The Big Bang and Other Farts, A Blast Through the Past, written by Daisy Bird and illustrated by Mariana Copo, recommended for ages four to eight. This story is the perfect balance between a history documentary and a fart joke. One day, Daddy Rat and his baby rat sit down to watch a serious documentary, only to be delighted and surprised when the documentary shows that the reason for life in the universe isn't the Big Bang, but the Big Fart. If you want to keep the fart party going, then you'd be happy to know that the Big Bang and other farts is actually Daisy Bird and Mariana Copos' second collaboration. If you want more from the duo, then we recommend checking out Who's Poo? which is currently available in hardcover with the paperback slated for August, 2023. And we have a downloadable activity sheet for it. Email us if you'd like the link. Moving on to mythical creatures, we have I Am a Meadow Mermaid coming out next month in June. Mermaids are as beloved by kids as dinosaurs, fairies, and unicorns are. But have you ever wondered what aspiring mermaids can do if they live in a landlocked area? That's the twist here. We have a farm girl with a big imagination who turns her prairie home into an ocean playground. She's joined by a new kid from the neighboring field and together the overturned bike is actually a shipwreck and the new kid, a sailor. Frolicking in the waves of wheat and oceans of grass, this whimsical book will charm young mermaids and little pirates everywhere and inspire them to embrace the spirit of the ocean by using their expansive imagination. Kelly George and Ellie Mackay have collaborated before on The Secret Bond. We printed art cards for I Am a Metal Mermaid featuring Ellie's cut paper art in shadow boxes. So email us if you'd like some while quantities last. Over to you, Stephanie. 
I grew up a lover of mythology and folklore, which is why I'm a big fan of The Song That Called Them Home, written by critically acclaimed David A. Robertson and illustrated by Maya McKibben, which is inspired by an Ojibwe legend recommended for ages four to eight. This story is about a brother and a sister who go on a trip with their mushroom and decide to go fishing while he naps. While they're fishing, their canoe flips and both are thrown overboard. When she surfaces, she sees her brother being pulled away by the mimic Wheezywack, creatures who live in around the water and like to interfere with humans. She must rescue her brother before the lure of the mimic Wheezywack song traps them both. David A. Robertson is an author of numerous books for young readers, including the two Governor General Literary Award winning picture books On the Trap Line and When We Were Alone. If you're already a fan of David A. Robertson, then keep your eye out as he is now an editorial director of New Children's Imprint at Penguin Random House Canada, which is dedicated to publishing Indigenous writers and illustrators. And as you can see, we also have this vibrant art card available upon request. If you're a fan of Tundra Books, Little Witch Hazel by Phoebe Hall, then The Little, ooh, sorry, then The Hidden World of Gnomes by Lauren Soloy is the book for you, recommended for ages three to seven. The Hidden World of Gnomes is a picture book introduction to the hidden folk called gnomes. The story is told from the point of view of multiple gnomes as they try to, as they tell you where they live, what they eat, what they wear, and so much more. If you're someone who's a big fan of cottage esque things, and you've come to the right place. This book is one of our longer picker, picture books coming in at 96 pages of pure cuteness. This is Lauren Soloy's third book with Tundra Books and it will not be her last. If you've enjoyed the art for this book as much as I did, then we have the poster for you. The Hidden World of Gnomes poster is available upon request while supplies last. We have some more highly anticipated picture books releasing this fall that we want to put on your to be read list. So first up, Dim Sum Palace is a humorous debut picture book inspired by Susan Fang's memories of epic dim sum feasts. This is a dream world adventure that is a gorgeous celebration of the sensory world of childhood. And in Ploof, join this little cloud's adventure in a brand new interactive picture book series co-written and co-illustrated by Narwhal and Jelly creator, Ben Planton, and up and coming picture book made, maker, Andy Chow Muser. The only way to make bread is a delicious exploration of all kinds of bread, from sourdough to bannock to bao. This tasty celebration of all kinds of bread will tempt bread lovers big and small. And how to decorate a Christmas tree? It's about a little girl who shares the steps for the perfect tree trimming, featuring stunning three-dimensional art and a twist ending. This book will quickly become a Christmas tradition of its own. The Little Books of the Little Brontes is a moving and atmospheric story about the power of imagination, the joy of storytelling, and the love of books. It includes an author's note, timeline of the Brontes' lives, and a fun craft with instructions on creating your own little book. Freddy the Flyer, Flyer plays homage to aviator Freddy Carmichael, the first Indigenous commercial pilot in the Arctic. And with each month of the year highlighting moments from his life, beauty of the North, and the power of dreams. In the Three Little Mittens, it follows a single mitten who is excluded by a matching pair in this endearing picture book about friendship, belonging, and the pressure to match. Finally, the Tragically Hip ABC is a love letter to the Tragically Hip, one of Canada's most beloved bands. This ABC picture book features illustrations from four renowned Canadian illustrators. Add these to your list and keep an eye out for these fabulous titles this fall. Thank you for tuning into Tundra's picture book list. You can find us online and don't hesitate to reach out directly to us with questions or for more information. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sil um, Sylvia and Stephanie. Our next presenter will be Casey Griffin. Casey is the Senior Marketing Manager at Phoenix International Publications. As a Senior Marketing Manager, her duties include developing marketing plans across imprints, creating monthly newsletters to showcase new and seasonal titles, coordinating with licensors for creative collaborations, and managing Phoenix's participation in industry events. Her favorite part of her job is the ever-changing day-to-day that presents new challenges and opportunities. Take it away, Casey. Hello. Um, so here at Sequoia Kids Media, um, we create print and digital content with favorite characters and new ideas. Our books are available in hardcover library binding, 
And most of our books are also available as ebooks, read alongs, and audio. Next. Um, so this slide and the next slide are both um, slides of our Chinese fables. Um, these come from directly from Chinese authors and illustrators. They've traveled across the world and across languages for us to share with you all. Um, the rain people is about spring rains that transform um, the earth from the winter season. Um, all four of these books that you'll see are beautifully illustrated. Um, and uh, the Brave Little Fire Dragon um, really showcases that um, even little ones can do big things and change the world. Um, these, all four of these books are for ages four to eight, um, and they have 34 pages. Um, next. So yeah, this is a continuation of the Chinese fables. Um, Amu and the snake um, tells the tale of Amu and his flute. Um, he becomes friends with the snake, um, but this really showcases um, that true friends will always be there for each other. Um, Millie and the goat um, is a very cute little story about a little girl named Millie who goes to see her grandmother one day um, and she bumps into this goat in the local park and they hang out for the day. This book really is about that there is a little bit of magic everywhere and in everyday life as well. Next. Um, so the Kids Ask About series, I personally love the series. I, I love them all, but I would have loved to have had this series um, as a kid. Um, this is the second set of the Kids Ask About series. The first set came out last spring, um, and there will be a third set coming out this fall, and so there will be 26 total. Um, these titles are super educational, but they don't really feel like a lesson. Um, they're filled with fast facts um, to keep kids entertained, and the question and answer format encourages STEM processing thinking. Um, like I said, this is a series that I would have loved to have had as a child. Um, it has both live images and illustrations. Um, they're just super informative and they don't, like I said, they don't necessarily feel like you're being taught anything. They're just really interesting to read through. Um, these are for a little bit older audience. So this is seven to 10 um, and these are 24 pages each. Uh, next. Um, and this is the kids' character series. Um, this series talks about the many ways kids can show and develop wonderful character traits. Um, it highlights things like bravery, confidence, friendliness, gratitude, kindness, and mindfulness. Um, the gratitude book, for example, talks about the many ways that kids can show gratitude, um, like using mannered, manners, sorry, helping others, being generous, and of course, saying thank you. Um, this, oh, the Kids Ask About series, as well as this series, also has uh, downloadable content that you can get from our website, or if you wanna email me directly, I can send it. Um, yeah, these are for ages four to eight, um, and these are 30 pages. Next. Um, so these are our first look and finds, or the newest addition to our first look and finds. So these are our Sesame Street titles. We also have titles from Paw Patrol, Peppa Pig, and Disney as well. Um, but these are our Sesame Street titles that came out this spring. Um, the look and find play definitely encourages focus and exploration. Um, Elmo's friends, um, kids get to go along with Elmo and all of his Sesame Street friends as they spend the day together. They explore things like amusement parks and going to the park. Um, Elmo's potty book, kids learn with Elmo as he learns to use the potty like a big kid. So that's a super popular title. And then Furry Friends Forever features Tango, who is Sesame Street's newest resident. Um, little ones can join Elmo and Tango 
as they search for Tango's new home. So we recommend these for ages three to seven and they're 16 pages. They're full of look and find um, activities. Every page um, has numerous things to look and find um, and they're very, very cute. Next. Um, these are the Disney My First Stories. Um, it's super exciting for us to have these. These are now in Spanish. So we have all of these in the original English text and we now have them in Spanish. Um, these are, you know, your favorite Disney characters that introduce children to reading. They are sweet and simple and short stories that are perfectly paced to make the story time extra special. Um, we recommend these for ages four to seven. They're 26 pages, um, but they're super cute and we're very excited to have them in Spanish. We don't have these um, as audiobooks, but we do have them in the ebook format as well. So next. And then these are the Disney Growing Up stories. Um, these are also now available in Spanish. So again, we have these in the original English versions and we now have these in Spanish as well. Um, these foster discussion of social emotional topics. Um, these are, you know, classic Disney characters, the nieces and nephews of Minnie and Mickey and Goofy and Donna, Donald, sorry. Um, so these help children connect to the story and its message. Um, these themes include first experiences, emotional well-being, being, sorry, responsibility, honesty, and more. Um, these are for ages four to seven, and these are 30 pages per book. Um, like I said, it's very excited, exciting for us that we have these in Spanish as well. Um, and I think that's it. We hit next. Yes, so this is all of my information. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions, um, and you can also find us on social media. Thank you so much, Casey. Next up, Karema Carrillo from Albert Whitman. Karema joined the Albert Whitman team in early 2022, specializing in content strategy and digital marketing. Having graduated with a degree in publishing studies, folks have always had a special place for her. Karema is looking forward to helping launch more trusted, relevant, and inclusive Albert Whitman titles. Thanks for joining us today, Karema. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Karema Carrillo, and I'm a marketing coordinator here at Albert Whitman. I'm very excited to share some of our page-turning picture book titles with you all today. Uh, before we begin, I would like to share that we are celebrating 104 years of independent publishing this year at AW, uh, just something that we're uh, very proud of. Can I have the next slide, please? It feels appropriate since we are discussing books to share a little bit of the AW story. Founded more than a century ago, our goal was simple, make good books that kids wanna read. Today, we continue this tradition guided by a deeper mission to create stories that also educate and empower children. Here at Albert Women, we believe that when we put the right story in the right hands, we can inspire the next generation to make the future brighter for everyone. Can I have the next slide? Um, this being said, we take pride in our catalog, which brings a variety of different titles to the table, including SEL titles, stories centered in Black history and literature, next level stories, including chapter books, middle grade and young adult. Our She Made History collection inspires readers with true stories of historic women, and our Celebration and Holidays collection introduces kids to the many ways people celebrate and find meaning in their traditions around the world. You can find these and many more online at alberwhitman.com. Can I have the next slide? I wanna start off with our SEL titles today. Uh, we believe these books can help shape kids into leaders who value empathy, inclusion, and personal responsibility. Next slide, please. In Grandpa Scroll, we follow a girl named Lily. Lily lives in Washington, DC. Her grandpa lives in Korea. They've never met, but they're good pen pals. Just when he's about to visit Lily in the US, grandpa dies. Lily and her mom fly to Korea, where they uncover the rice paper scroll Grandpa had hoped to finish painting with Lily. To honor his wish, Lily writes a poem about her grandfather that sits just below his poem about her, so that in the end, they finish the story together. 
Uh, this book just pubbed and is celebrating its book and and celebrated its book birthday this past week and is available now. Can I have the next slide, please? Uh, moving on, we have Anzu and the art of friendship. Anzu is starting a new school and is struggling to find her place. Starting a new, new art unit, her class struggles to learn origami. It's not easy to make friends or to fold tiny, tiny paper figures. But with her grandfather's encouragement, Anzu finds a way to try again, even when she doesn't succeed the first time, and helps her classmates do the same. Written by a Japanese-American author and illustrated by a Japanese-Brazilian designer, this story has characters use art and creativity to manage challenging emotions. This particular title will pub next month in June. Next slide, please. Our Great Big Feeling series is one of our more notable AW SEL series. Uh, this series takes a relatable look at emotions for children just learning for children just learning to cope with their feelings. Characters model coping techniques and solve their own problems. Like the titles for these books suggest, these stories are all about feeling way past the regular feelings we're familiar with. Way Past Sorry will be the newest addition to this series where we follow Kat. Kat promised to be Sage's buddy on the class trip, but when it was time for the bus, Kat sat with someone else. Now Sage is ignoring Kat and won't talk to her even after she apologizes. Kat is way past sorry. Somehow she needs to make this right again with her best friend. Other titles in the series include Way Past Sad and Way Past Jealous, which you can now find in paperback. Can I have the next slide? Our last SEL book that I'll be sharing is Call Me Calvin. Ever since Calvin was born, he's been his dad's little man. At first, Calvin liked the special nickname the two of them shared. But now that he's getting older, Calvin doesn't feel big and strong like his dad. One afternoon after playing in the yard, Calvin discovers that maybe that's okay. He's Calvin and that's exactly who he should be. This story shares a timely message about masculinity and letting kids be kids. Call Me Calvin will also be pubbing next month in June. Can I have the next slide? Next, we're gonna jump into the past and show some of our titles that share some historic stories. Can I have the next slide? Uh, Hope for Ryan White tells the true story of Ryan White, who became a key public figure of the HIV AIDS crisis of the, of the 1980s. When Ryan White was diagnosed with AIDS as a teenager in 1984, doctors gave him just six months to live. With the time he had left, all he wanted to do was lead a normal life, go to school and spend time with his friends. Instead, he faced discrimination from people who didn't understand his illness, but he didn't let that stop him. Ryan kicked off a heroic battle to educate the world about a disease that was spreading rapidly and killing more and more people each year. By sharing his story, he helped change the conversation and raise awareness of an epidemic that still affects us today. This inspiring story will be pubbing in June. Can I have the next slide? Uh, next, we have something for all librarians and library lovers to enjoy. Uh, the Horseback Librarians is a historic story set in the backwoods of Kentucky in the 1930s, during a time where there were no libraries. Librarians there and throughout the South delivered books to family by horseback and mule, sleeping outdoors or sheltering in barns when they could, going from farm to farm in remote areas. In this story, a woman named Anna Mary stands in for all real life horse li horseback librarians who keep those, who help keep the love of books alive in Appalachia during the Great Depression. This story that, ser this story that serves as a reminder that reading is a gift and stories are meant to be shared will be pubbing next month in June. Can I have the next slide, please? Uh, these next titles are STEM-focused titles, stories that we believe give kids the confidence to ask questions, make mistakes, and find answers. Can I have the next slide? Our Kids Scientist series allows readers to spend the day with scientists that are kids just like them. They ask questions and follow answers. Uh, Volcano Experts on the Edge is the newest title in the series that will be pubbing next month. We follow Owen, a volcanologist, as he and his team study volcanoes and learn more about their activity and behavior. Others in the series include marine biologists on a dive and archaeologists on a dig. Can I have the next slide, please? Uh, this next title is the newest book in our Science Makes It Work collection. In A Sound of a Guitar, we follow Mia. Mia is determined to become a guitar hero and will learn everything she can about this amazing instrument. 
So she sets out to gather the knowledge she needs to build her own instrument and put a show on for her family. This fun and informative title just popped this past week and is available now. Can I have the next slide, please? Cicada Symphony is the new title, is a new title that comes from the author of the Kid Scientist series, Sue Fleece. Using a combination of rhythmic, rhyming verse, and fun facts, this story describes the life cycle of a cicada and helps readers better understand this fascinating insect. Cicada Symphony is out now, having just pubbed this past week. Can I have the next slide, please? Lastly, I'll be sharing some special picture, some special picture book titles that we hope will spark ima uh, readers' imaginations. Uh, next slide, please. The cool, in the coolest beard, Isaac wants to grow a beard just like his dad, who always seems to be the coolest guy in the barbershop. Every day for weeks, Isaac uses dad's beard oil, but nothing happens. The next time it's barbershop day, Isaac doesn't even want to go back, but maybe there's still a way for him to grow the coolest beard. This book celebrates the Black cultural tradition of barbershops as community and family space, along with the social emotional concept of developing healthy masculinity. The coolest beer will be pubbing next month in June. Can I have the next slide, please? Jack the Library Cat is a sweet story about a stray cat that keeps turning up for story time at the library. However, animals aren't allowed in the building. Not, and not only that, the children's librarian is not a cat person, which is tragic. We should all be cat people. Uh, a boy named Pascal crosses paths with a friendly feline, with a friendly feline and sneaks him inside. Forward Reviews reviewed this title with a cozy tale about how libraries are spaces for everyone, maybe even those with tales. While Kirkus Reviews said, and I quote, read it and purr. Jack pub this past week and is out now and available for everyone. Can I have the next slide? Get Ready for School will pub this coming August, just in time for the new school year. It captures the special excitement of the first day of school while getting a behind the scenes look at the collaboration, patience, planning, and hard work of faculty and staff. Can I have the next slide? Flicker and the Special Guests is the latest book in the Grand Bug Hotel series. Famous singers Itsy and Bitsy Longlegs are coming to stay at the Grand Bug Hotel. Flicker and her friends try to keep try to get their room right by, just, by opening up the cur curtains, turning on the lights, and sweeping up the cobwebs. But when the special guests arrive, Flicker finds out that everyone has a different idea of what makes a space feel like home. This title will be pubbing next month in June. Can I have the next slide, please? Next, we have two new titles joining our Digby in the Construction Crew series. Both have pubbed this last week and are ready to read. In, in Trucks on Vacation, the crew learns that sometimes taking a break from hard work is the most important job of all. Characters in the story demonstrate creativity and resourcefulness as they build their own beach. Can I have the next slide? In Dump Truck Duel, readers take a look at the pitfalls of competition between friends. This book reminds readers to appreciate close friendships and strive to keep them safe and happy for everyone involved. Next slide, please. Uh, to wrap things up, I would like to say thank you. Thank you all for listening. Be sure to follow us on social where we do some cool things and give you guys all the latest AW updates. Um, and for any that are attending a ALA annual this year, be sure to stop by our booth at 3817. We're very excited to have it in our home turf of Chicago this year. Thank you. Thank you, Karema. Our next, our final presenter today will be Kaylee Flagg. Kaylee is a children's library marketing associate <clears throat> on the education and library team at Simon & Schuster. For all four years of middle school, she won most books checked out at her library. So you could say her career is the ultimate expression of her childhood ambitions. When she's not reading, she is usually running in Central Park, attempting a new recipe, or following random dogs down the street. Take it away, Kaylee. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. Like you just heard, my name is Kaylee, and I'm the Children's Library Marketing Associate here at Simon & Schuster. And I'm so excited to tell you about some of our great picture books, which I've broken into a few different categories. So you can go to the next slide. 
I'm going to get started with some of our new picture books from our heavy hitting authors. In Our Dragon, beloved picture book creator Mem Fox puts a fresh spin on a new baby book in this tender, funny story of unconditional love that anyone who's ever been around a cranky baby can relate to. Love is Loud, which has four starred reviews, introduces readers to Diane Nash, a civil rights leader who worked alongside Martin Luther King Jr. and John Lewis. This poignant and powerful, says Kirkus, nonfiction picture book is a stunning little known story and a welcome volume that highlights major moments in Nash's life, says School Library Journal and The Horn Book. In Every Life is a simple and profound meditation on the many wonders of life from two-time Caldecott Honor recipient, Marla Frazee. Weather Together sees Nimbus learn how to weather her cloudy moods and accept help from her best friend, Kelp, in this charming and gently encouraging picture book companion to the New York Times bestselling Not Quite, Not, Not Quite Narwhal and Perfectly Pegasus. Next slide. An egret and a rhinoceros navigate the ups and downs of their symbiotic relationship, which is more like a friendship, and We're Going to Be Pals, a warm and witty book from bestselling author illustrator Mark Teague. In the sweet and charming Penny and Pip, a little girl, little girl finds a lost dinosaur baby roaming the halls of a museum and is determined to give it a home. And lastly, Noodle the Pug embarks on a quest to climb Comfy Mountain, aka a pile of clothes on the couch, in this sweet and entertaining sequel to the number one New York Times bestselling picture book, Noodle, Noodle and the No Bones Day, by the creator of the viral Bones or No Bones TikTok videos. Next slide. Next, I'm gonna tell you about some of our great books from our Deneen Milner imprint, focusing on BIPOC stories. Based on Teresa Wilson's, AKA the poet Teresa the Songbirds, beautiful viral spoken word poem of the same name, You So Black is a picture book celebration of the richness, the nuance, and the joy of blackness. In Stella and the Mystery of the Missing Tooth, the effervescent companion to the picture book, Stella Keeps the Sun Up, Stella goes on the hunt to figure out who's behind her friend's missing tooth. Next slide. And now I'll share some of our Windows and Mirrors titles. These delightful, moving stories ensure a wide range of readers will see themselves reflected in the pages. From the creator of Nickelodeon's hit series, Shimmer and Shine, comes Baba June's Treasure, a sweet and imaginative picture book about a little girl who spends the day with her grandfather and learns more about who he is. All Are Welcome meets Be Kind in the Together Tree, a poignant and accessible picture book about the power of every bystander, no matter how small, has to extend the ki has to extend kindness and stand up in the face of intolerance. When Amy Wu learns about Chinese ribbon dancing, she can't wait to try it out herself in this charming and brightly illustrated fourth installment in the Amy Wu picture book series. Lastly, a quiet girl overwhelmed by her rambunctious family finds a magical land of solitude only to discover what truly makes a home a home in Martina as Too Many Tias, a lively and magical bilingual picture book that reimagines the beloved Caribbean folktale, La Cucaracha Martina, and this one will also be published in Spanish. Next slide. From the author of Not Quite Snow White comes a story about a young Muslim boy celebrating the many reasons he loves going to his local masjid in the Masjid Kamal Loves, a jubilant and playful picture book, perfect for fans of Mami's Kimar and Abdul's story. I Can Be All Three is our favorite day of the year meets Alma and how she got her name. This warm, lyrical picture book follows a child who learns to celebrate her multicultural identity and finds pride in all the stories and worlds that live inside her. Water Day is a joyful picture book from acclaimed author Margarita Engel about a young girl in her community celebrating the arrival of the Waterman who visits weekly to distribute water to the village. And this will also be published in Spanish. Next slide. In Ramen for Everyone, perfect of fans of Amy Wu and the perfect bow and Bilal Cook's doll, and also anyone who loves ramen, Hero aspires to make a bowl of ramen as delicious as his dad's and runs into some surprises on his first attempt. Platanios Our Love is a delicious picture book about the ways plantains shape Latinx culture, community, and family told through a young girl's experiences in the kitchen with her abuela. In the vein of thank you, Omu, comes my dancer love, and I just did that one. And a little girl holds lessons learned in her grandfather's sorry, sorry store close while adjusting to a new home in Lolo's sorry, sorry store about the joy of community, connection, and Filipino culture. Next slide. 
When two young readers reach for the same book at the library, they set off in a charming romp through the stacks of the rambunctious and endearing, this book is my best friend. Next, Library Fish returns in this charming picture book about the unusually literary fish learning to do what everyone around her loves, read. And lastly, in The Loud Librarian, a little librarian with a larger than life voice finds her place in this sweet and uproarious picture book about being true to yourself, no shushing required. And all these books are perfect for any librarians on the call and young readers who love the library. Next slide. And now we'll round it out with some sweet books about friendship. On the Night Before Kindergarten, beloved author illustrator Rose, by beloved author illustrator Rosemary Wells tells the story of a young cat who goes to bed worrying about what might happen on the first day of school, only to be pleasantly surprised in this engaging and reassuring picture book. The school anxieties continue in Bitsy Bat, School Star. A little bat struggles to fit in, only to learn to celebrate differences in this darling picture book, for all perfect for all children, but especially those with autism, says Kirkus where I got a starred review, about starting school, making friends, and seeing what makes each person special. Next slide. And that's all for us today. I hope you enjoyed seeing our collection and learning more about all of our amazing picture books. And please feel free to contact me with any further questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kaylee. And a big thank you to all of today's wonderful panelists. Tomorrow, all attendees will receive an email containing links to today's video recording, title list, slide presentation, and a certificate of completion. For more about Booklist webinars, be sure to visit www.booklistonline.com webinars, where you can view archives of past webinars and register for upcoming ones like those you see here. Recently, ALA's Office for Intellectual Freedom reported 1,269 demands to censor library books and resources in 2022 the highest number of attempted book bans since ALA began compiling data about censorship in libraries more than 20 years ago. Join the Unite Against Book Bans campaign to help protect the freedom to read and to empower readers everywhere. Visit uniteagainstbookbans.org for more information, resources to donate, and more. And remember that you can utilize Booklist to support your library's collection development choices with reviews backed by the ALA. We have a webinar special subscription offer, and don't forget that your subscription dollars help ALA advocate on behalf of libraries, assisting those facing an unprecedented number of book challenges. Email us at info at booklistonline.com for more information. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, and one more huge thank you to our panelists and to our sponsors, Penguin Random House Canada Young Readers, Sequoia Kids Media, Albert Whitman and Company, and Simon & Schuster's Children's Publishing. This concludes today's webinar. See you next time.